What was your relationship with Soundgarden like? I produced them once. Mm-hmm. And that's for the stuff that got tacked onto the back of the Screaming Life EP, which was the FOP EP. So I recorded the FOP EP, which had the FOP remix, and then there's the FOP remix, the Big Dumb Sex remix, the Spoon Man remix. I did a rejected remix for Switch Open that no one's ever heard. Uh, there are two uh, remixes of Spoon Man, one that got rejected and the one that got released, which was the B-side of Black Hole Sun, which is actually pretty pretty cool. Uh, and uh, and then the work I did with the Telephantasm, so a lot of remix work, and specifically they wanted me to do my kind of remixing, which is using a lot of media sources and just deconstructing the band, you know, in, in kind of a brutal way, you know, things, you know, things reconfigured and bases over. You know, verses over choruses and choruses over verses and things like that. So the, the Soundgarden remixes weren't really remixes the way Madonna had remixes. They were, <laughs> you know, they, they weren't, you weren't supposed to dance to them. Yeah. I think that was the idea. That's why the labels paid for it. Oh, yeah, it's summertime. Let's get a Soundgarden remix. And then they get Big Dumb Sex, which I think he says fuck like 45 times. Do you think Kim and the band would be able to eventually kind of get back in the studio and make a new album, or is that something that, that's not going to be possible? Well, if you're inviting me to speculate, I haven't spent any time thinking about that. I will say I'm very happy that Kim is playing again and that he's taking this opportunity to to work in different musical situations. And if Kim stopped playing, a lot of people would be really pumped out. You know, I mean, that's Mm -hmm. inside that that thing he does. That's 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 a big part of what you're talking about. But yeah, I mean, if there's never another Soundgarden, that's a drag, you know. So how did your relationship with Soundgarden begin? Was it similar to how your relationship with Nirvana began? Almost exactly the same. Well, actually, not quite the same way. Not quite the same way. I was living in Ellensburg uh, and I got invited to make an EP for them. Uh, but it was the same thing where they had uh, a very wonderful record they did with Jack. And now I was getting to do the second record, which is a little like having a gun pointed at you, <laughs> you know, because Jack's so good and people make great records with Jack. But um, yeah, it was, I think it was 1989 and I was still living in Eastern Washington. So without ever meeting Soundgarden, you know, uh, we had a, you understand that record was recorded in the Moore Theater, right? Mm-hmm. Do you know about that? Yeah. Yeah, so a friend of mine uh, was also a very, uh, very good engineer and producer, Drew Canulet, uh, took his truck up to and got it. Actually, I think he, he negotiated the space. I think he knew the guys at the Moor, and so we set up in the alley and uh, the two days. Yeah, I think we had two days of recording in the Moor Theater, and uh, and that's how I, you know that's where I got to know Soundgarden, and I'm still good friends with Kim. You know, we we talk a right. lot. Yeah, no, Kim Kim turned into a lifelong friend. He's a pretty amazing person. And they were a different band with Hero, you know, hmm. all respect to the other great bass players that were in the band. But that that was, um, yeah, that, that was a Hero record. He, he definitely had this kind of, like like Chad, he, he brought kind of a looseness to it and a swing to it that, uh, that kind of disappeared with other players and all that. Hmm. 